And the more you die, the more he lives. God does not use men who are full of themselves. He can't fill you when you are full of you. More of you, less of him. Some of you, some of him. Less of you, more of him. None of you, all of him. First Kings chapter 18. Then Elijah said to the people, Come near. Come near to me. So all the people approached him. And he repaired and rebuilt the old altar of the Lord that had been broken down or torn down by Jezebel. It could also be by anything. Verse 31. Then Elijah took 12 stones in accordance with the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. To whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. Verse 32. So the stones Elijah built. So with the stones, Elijah built an altar in the name of the Lord. He made a trench round about the altar large enough to hold two measures of seed. Then he laid out the wood, cut the the ox in pieces or the bullock in pieces and laid it on the wood and he said fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the bond offering and the wood and he said do it the second time and they did it and the second time and he said do it the third time and they did it the third time the water flowed around the altar and also he also filled the trench with water verse 36 at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice elijah the prophet approached the altar and said oh lord the god of abraham isaac and israel jacob let it be known today that you are god in israel and that i am your servant that i have done all these things at your word so everything you're seeing here is at your word one does happen as a result of the word amen verse 37 answer me O lord answer me so that this people may know that you O lord are god and that you have turned their hearts back to you that presupposes that the hearts of the people has turned away from god okay that their hearts may be turned back to you verse 38 then the fire of the lord fell and consumed the burnt offering the wood and even the stones and the dust it also licked up the water in the trench when all the people saw it they fell face downward and they said the lord he is god the lord he is god the lord bless the reading and the teaching of his word in jesus mighty name we'll pray Tonight, I want to do something. I would love to pray, but I will come to pray later. I know we're in an intense moment of prayer. But I will not do a good job as a wise master builder if I don't lay the foundation I need to do today. Otherwise, we will pray again and wonder why we don't get results. And I don't want that cycle to continue, so I want to help you this moment. So I want to do something tonight, if you permit me. Uh, to just give it a title I'd like to call it repairing your altar for wonders repairing your altar for what for wonders the Lord bless you in Jesus mighty name repairing your altar for wonders this is Gilgal so it is both a prayer meeting and a teaching time repairing your altar for wonders an altar is a place of fellowship. An altar is a place of fellowship. An altar is a place of encounter with God. It is a place of intimacy with our Father. So if you're taking notes, write it down. The altar is a place of fellowship. An altar is a place of of encounter with God it is where we get instructions 
it is where we get revelation it is where we get direction so in those days when men want to get direction they raise an altar when people want to fellowship with god they raise an altar when people want to have an encounter with god they raise an altar so it is a place of instruction a place of intimacy it is a place in places where god chooses to do something with his own like he doesn't do in other places so if i raise an altar here what that means is that god and i will be having experiences here that you will not be having over there so an altar is a place of fellowship please this teacher will help you today and don't think you understand what i'm saying until we get to the end of it an altar is a place of fellowship and there's a difference between relationship and fellowship you can have relationship with someone you don't have fellowship with you can have relationship with someone you don't have fellowship with A man can be married to his wife and they don't have fellowship. Fellowship is deeper than relationship. Relationship is the foundation for fellowship. What you know in the place of fellowship, you don't know by virtue of relationship. You may have relationship with me by virtue of the fact that you're a TTC member. It doesn't mean you know some things about me those things are known in the place of what sir talk to me now fellowship so those who fellowship are those who have intimacy and those who have revelation instruction that others don't have what makes one christian to be different from another is not relationship but fellowship our distinction as christians is in the place of fellowship what makes one child to know so much about his father than the other children is not relationship they are all children of the same father what distinguishes us is what sir <laughs> The secret of the Lord are with those who fear him. Did you get what I just said right now? The secret of the Lord are with some, not everybody. And those people are those who fear him. Can I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? How shall, how shall I be justified as God that Abraham did not know that I was passing by to go and do something there? That the sovereign God became restrained by his relationship with a man. How shall I do a thing without revealing it to Abraham? because of the special fellowship he has with me we are all children of god by relationship we are distinguished by the fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of what sir say the, the fellowship of who the holy spirit and the holy spirit reveals to us the mind of the father so you can have grace you can have love from the father grace from jesus the absence of fellowship will be the reason why your christian life will not be like that of others impact is a function of fellowship impact is a function of fellowship the closer you get to the father the more intimate you get 
with the father because he is in the holy of holies at the outer court you have relationship you come close in the inner court but fellowship is in the holy of holies outer court jesus inner court holy spirit holy of holies the father everything about the holy of holies reveals the father i'm calling you to a place of fellowship because there are things god wants to do but god will do it on the strength of fellowship thank you lord jesus so the altar is a place of fellowship the altar is a place of encounter it was in the place of prayer that the lord jesus appeared to me so i've had the privilege in my lifetime of having encounters with the lord jesus christ minimum three times 31 years ago i had my first encounter with the lord jesus i was in the stadium and he came and he touched me bishop fred ado was ministering and i was in that state of worship when the hand touched me and i thought somebody spoke to me and he said go home i want to speak to you 9 a.m and 9 p.m in the night and i trekked from that place one hour i got home when i got home he was there waiting for me he said take your paper paper and biro begin to write i couldn't find any paper so i took my father's medical doc document i told him and i began to write and he began to reveal 31 32 years ago the headquarters international headquarters of your ministry will be in greenwich headquarters of your ministry will be in abuja if you know what abuja was 1989 why would god speak to me about abuja 1989 The international headquarters of our leadership academy is going to be in Hawaii. I'm a Barak boy. I don't know Hawaii. I don't know Greenwich. I had to look for the name after the Lord disappeared. So for some who think that you live a scattered life, they don't know you are living on schedule. It was in the place of fellowship he said to me clearly the ministry will be here will be there will be there and i will never forget one thing he said to me he said there's a particular state in nigeria you must not have your headquarters there i mean you must not have your church there you are free to preach there but don't put your church there he spoke to me about the americas before america ever opened the door in the place of fellowship speaking to a boy whose ancestry never left this country it is in the place of fellowship that your perspective about your life will change eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that god has in store for those who love him but they are revealed to them by what sir his spirit you didn't hear what I just said? They are revealed by what, sir? Donald, by spirits, right? And we say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and they are revealed by who, sir? And the spirit is in charge of what, sir? So if there's no fellowship, no revelation. Confusion is a proof that you are living a, a life that is bereft of fellowship. Oh, you're going to cry to God today. This will be one of the best meetings you've had in a long time because this will set a solid foundation for the rest of this year. I was at Idowu Taylor's with Bishop Emmanuel Kure. We were just number one, Idowu Taylor, Lagos Commerce of Chambers and Industry. We we're having a meeting and I closed myself in the state of worship again. And all of a sudden, my eyes were open. Next thing I saw the Lord Jesus descending with a mighty speed on chariots. I said, what's going on? And he told me, he said, lift up your hand. And I lifted up my hand. And he began to dress me just the way you have in Ephesians chapter 6. Began to put almost everything all around me. Major General Ajemba, Tony Ajemba, 
retired now was right by my right hand side he drove me to the meeting dr tony asogua who is in america today was by my left hand side i was just a young man this was senior men but they loved me so they took me to the meeting it was supposed to be for businessmen and as the lord jesus began to approach i saw it was so clear and he said raise your hands and all of that and i he began to dress me put on the armor put on everything he said from today i've armed you my wife and i were having the conversation and one of our pastors i said from 30, for 32 years man 32 i have never the lord says son look back have you ever seen anybody risen against you and has succeeded 32 solid years sir. i cannot remember one man born of a woman christian or not who has risen against me and has succeeded i've never seen and for one reason he said you will not fight he said the most dangerous thing that can happen is when you choose not to fight and the lord jesus began to talk to me about the church in the place of fellowship by the holy spirit i'm calling you to something today the altar when you see altar in the old testament remember fellowship altars can be cultivated even so altars can be destroyed people rear altars and people destroy them if your family member is not watching today get them on board because this is not just a message for our church but for the body of christ something is about to shift in our lives in the mighty name of jesus the altar is a place of repentance the altar is a place of repentance sir you cannot have fellowship and not repent the closer you get to the father the more you discover your your inabilities your weaknesses the proof that you've met the father is in repentance mommy i used to think that the word repent is actually a word for only sinners until i came to acts of the apostle chapter 3 it said repent so that the times of refreshing may come uh -uh. that means he's talking to christians repent and i said no what does that word repent means the lord said to me and i was sharing in bishop joseph gallantin's church in pittsburgh when i went there to speak to them i said the word repent simply means you are living far below the standard god expects you expects you to live in so it's time for you to turn around turn about and return to where you belong repent there's something about fellowship fellowship ushers in repentance the altar the place of fellowship is a place where repentance takes place and there's something about repentance the more we see him as we as we behold him in a mirror we are changed from one glory to another glory as by say it again sir by the spirit and the spirit is in charge of what you are not talking now fellowship Ma, ma, can I ask you a question? How is it that nothing remarkable has changed in the last 10 years of your Christian work with God? So the proof of fellowship will always be noticed by the constant giving up, letting go, letting go, dying daily. That's why Paul the Apostle said, I die daily. And the more you die, the more he lives. God does not use men who are full of themselves. He can't feel you when you are full of you. Join this global community of Transformers today by downloading our latest app right now. We call it the Transformers Hub. It is available on Android and iOS. Be among the first to have it. For more information, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org.
forward to connecting with you on the prophetic prayer hour altar as God is committed to advancing his wonders through your life we are in the season of wonders without number and the God of wonders will do great wonders in your life until you become a wonder unto many so let it be in Jesus mighty name woman of God if you want to see the Holy Ghost enter you past Sunday you want to see the Holy Ghost enter you and fill you up he needs to see you empty of you more of you less of him some of you some of him more of you less of him less of you more of him none of you all of him Nigeria the body of Christ across the world from South Africa to America we want to see a move of God and we think we can sing our way to the revival we're praying for hello singer it's important for you to know that we don't sing to revival we die to revival we die to see revival why will he revive you when you are still alive we don't preach to revival we die to revival we don't teach to revival we die I die daily I die daily said Paul I die to self I die to self will I die to my arrogance my self conceited nature I die to all of it and Enoch was with God Enoch walk with God Enoch walk with God Enoch walk with God Enoch walk with God Pastor Manus Enoch walk with God when he started walking with God it was all of Enoch and some of God but the more he walked with God it was some of Enoch and more of God and it got to a place where the Bible says uh, and Enoch was not and Enoch was not when they asked questions Enoch was not there to answer when they attack Enoch was not there to respond when they fight Enoch was not there to fight Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him that's a place God wants to take you to but he can't take you there alive for no man will see me and leave The dimension, oh, Kikapalaziata, I'm praying, sir. There's a dimension I'm crying for. I'm not there yet, sir. I've been asking the Lord for years. I said, Lord, let it come to a point in my life, in my work with you, that as I'm walking and as I'm ministering, literally, I will be translated and Jesus' presence will appear. Am I talking to somebody here? That is my quest. That there will be none of me, but all of him. I know you came here for breakthrough but I want to show you what to not make you to be looking for breakthrough but you become a sign and a wonder the altar is a place of fellowship ah, it's a place of intimacy with the father it's a place of repentance it's a place of reconciliation with the father the altar is a place of reconciliation and reconnection with God altar the altar is a place where you and the father you come back into intimacy i have somewhat against you that you have a name that leave i hear that you are prospered i hear you say you have money he said but i have somewhat against you you have left your first love you have joined the gang you have joined the clique now you, you the proof of your work with me is in the prosperity you have i don't measure your growth by how much money you have i measure your growth by how much of me you know let not the rich glory in his riches let not the wise glory in his wisdom but let him that glory glory in the fact that he knoweth the lord that you know the lord for they that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits that i may know him that's the cry of men who are seeking for god that's the cry of men that god will use in this last day that i may know him i don't want to know church i don't want to know politics i don't want to know who is a rich man in our church i don't want to know how much you have that i may know god and if you're going to be my friend you better reveal him to me if you don't know him you better 
better go your way if you can share him with me you better go your way thank god for your car thank god for your house thank god for your money that i may know him <laughs> myself myself and one of my brothers we all grew up grew up together in poverty so god has blessed him now west african manager for one of the biggest oil company for the whole of west african region living in a comfortable house massive house in lagos we we're talking recently and asked him a question i said there was a time where our greatest prayer point father give me house father give me car father give me money father give me. okay so now we have all of that uncle paul what it remain children god don't give us if i was telling me say pastor sam no woman should come close to me say because the gift to give children is with me so children there are plenty we've gotten the cars we've gotten the houses i was striving i was striving in a car that used to be my, my dream and i was striving in it the lord said to me say son now you're driving in what used to be your dream he said what has that added to your life what has that? And that was why Peter, Peter left Jesus. Okay, Tapalia Toza. The Lord just mentioned that to me. Peter left Jesus to pursue fish. Jesus said, Now fish, you want to you left me. You left your calling because of fish. I will make you catch fish. You will catch so much. And you will come to realize that the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. And Peter caught fish and his net began to break. When he saw fish, the Bible said, jump into the water and he swam to Jesus. He said, Master, I leave all of that. That was why Jesus said, Lovest thou me more than all of this? And he said, Master, I do. Lovest thou me more than house, more than car, more than children, more than all this? Is this not why you left me? You left me for all of this. I wanted to teach you that with me, you will have all of them. So you don't need to leave me for them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these things I know it's so, sir, Pastor Shego. I know, Pastor Sunday, that if you follow him, that scripture may not look like real. It is real. Sweetheart, it is real. Seek ye first the kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things. Except if God is a liar. Except if God is a liar. When you seek God first, he said all these things. Shall be what, sir? Want to buy clothes. Want to look this. So what do you do, sir? We normally will spend time. Okay, I want to get my, my Thanksgiving dress. And somebody walk up to me. I say, Pastor Sam. Say, um, can I pay for all your Thanksgiving dress for the rest of the year? I say, what? Say, give me your tailor. I'll take care of your Thanksgiving dress for the rest of the year. When I go back home, the Lord said, now, what would you consider as an excuse not to seek me? Am I talking to somebody here? The altar is a place of reconciliation. Lovest thou Jesus more than all this? Since you left him, how much have you gotten? <laughs> the Bible says, and they left him. And Peter said, We go out fishing. Say about this thing, following this man of God. Uh, uh. <laughs> and they left him. And Jesus showed up. He said, Children, have you any meat? Since you left me, since you left your calling, since you left your ministry, what have you made of yourself? What have and watch those? What those who are in fellowship with me? How I am making them and you are struggling to make yourself you can never take yourself to the height that only God can take you to I'm calling you to a place of fellowship today the altar is a place of consecration the 
altar is a place of consecration. At the altar, we give up. At the altar, we say, Father, ah, I don't know if some of you remember in the early days of our walk with God, when we would make statements like, Father, if I ever try to sleep with a woman, take me home. Ah, the altar is a place of consecration. It is at the altar that you separate Christians. Gather unto me, Pastor Sunday. Gather Okati Malakatosiata Pratos Katesia. Gather unto me my saints who have made covenant by sacrifice. What separates us, sir, is not how long we have been in the faith. How long we have been in the church does not matter consecration is the key to distinction ha sir god will be unfair god will be unfair if you give up all to follow him and i'm holding on to some and we are used equally you hear what i just said right now listen sir god will be unjust his word will not be true if something will not let razor touch his hair and you, you are busy babbing punk. Today you bab punk. Tomorrow you bab this. Tomorrow you bab that one. And Samson, for the sake of God, will not let razor touch his hair. Will not drink wine. And you are busy. You drink wine. You drink alcohol. You drink gedu. You drink medu. You drink all of it. If your mouth is open to all, that is why your mouth can't declare more. No. Consecration. How do you expect God to use two ladies equally? When one lady, until Shiloh comes, she crosses her legs. No man will enter me until Shiloh comes. Until the appointed one comes. For the sake of my savior. And there is another one who just opens the leg everywhere. And you think we'll be used equally? God will be unfair. He is merciful, but it will be unfair to use us equally. The altar is a place of consecration. Consecration is what separates men. Now that is why the Levites, if you notice the Levites, the Levites are not to marry the kind of women that Jews, the Jewish men marry. Consecration. By virtue of their calling, there are women they can't marry. Eunuchs, by virtue of the call of a eunuch, are you hearing me? A eunuch is not to marry. It's a consecration that comes with his calling. Paul the apostle. You wonder why Paul is in the class all alone by himself? All the other apostles had wives. You know what Paul said? He said, did I not have the liberty to carry about women like other apostles do? He said, he that must serve the Lord. If you really say, I encourage that you be single as I am. What he was telling you is that, sir, there are dimensions of encounters you have without any encumbrances. You can't have a wife and children and function in certain dimensions that the poor lines operate in. When you want to seek God, your wife is calling you. When you want to jump into the realm of the spirit, your children are calling you. There's nothing wrong with marriage. It only tells you that there's a limitation to how much you can be used. And I'm not against marriage, please. I'm married but I'm telling you that consecration is a key to our distinction you can't sleep with everything and see the realms of the spirit you can't eat everything and yet want to have access to scriptures so the altar is a place of consecration it is a place of sacrifice sir I don't know who wants to truly fellowship with God that doesn't give up something don't know how you will fellowship with God he that must come after me must forsake father mother, wife, children even your own life I'm not sure this is the kind of message you wanted to hear but we're laying foundation repairing our altar for wonders 
you watch and see some men do amazing things. See, this year, you'll be hearing testimony that when Pastor Sam was passing by. Just when he was passing by me, the power of God touched me. I'm not asking for amen. <laughs> I'm not asking for amen. We're pressing in. We're pressing in. Putting the past behind. Pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Be not conforming to, to this world, but be your chance. Somebody renew of your mind. The Bible says that we should present our bodies as what sir? Living sacrifice. The altar is a place of consecration. The altar is a place of consecration where ownership is rebellion and lordship is submission. Can I say that again? The altar is a place of consecration and sacrifice where ownership of anything is rebellion. Lordship is proof by submission. How do you know a man that is consecrated to God? How do you know a man in fellowship with God? He owns nothing. That's the first thing that happens in the place of consecration and sacrifice. You lose ownership. You come under lordship. Because you know that to own anything means you have gone into a state of rebellion. The gift is not yours. You are a steward. What is it that thou hast that you have not received? We are receivers. We are not owners. Your life was given. If the life with which you used to get money was given, God owns your life. He owns your money. So such statements as my money is only permitted here. But in the presence of God, you own nothing. Hear me and hear me well. The altar is a place where we lose ownership and submit to lordship. Now listen. There's a difference between Jesus is my savior and Jesus is my lord. Yet you confess both on the day you gave your life to Christ. Is that okay, sir? Now the challenge with the body of Christ, why we are not yet seeing miracles and revival. The kind of the move of God we want to see. Can I tell you why we are not seeing it, sir? We have too many Christians who have Jesus as their savior, but not their Lord. Maybe you don't understand who a Lord is. A Lord owns you. A Lord bought, bought you. The Lord paid the price for you. You let's It's absolute rebellion to be under the Lord and be making your own decisions. I was I was in the house. I was in the house of James Madison, the fourth president of the United States, who spent three days there in Virginia. And sir, uh, there's a name of a black uh, Gilmore. Yes. The black man, the first black man that bought his freedom. Gilmore has Gilmore Farms in Virginia. Now, sir, it's amazing to know that Gilmore was serving James Madison. James Madison was his slave master, the fourth president of the United States. One day, Gilmore said to me, says, I want to buy my freedom. And he said, if you want to buy your freedom, you'll pay for it. Long and short of it, he found his way, paid the price, eventually had the Gilmore Farms. In our own case, sir, we can't buy our freedom because we can't pay the price. The Lord paid the price that we couldn't pay. You couldn't have bought. Listen, you can pay Satan, but how do you pay God? I'm asking you a question. You can pay Satan, but how do you pay God? Do you have the price that God wants? Can you offer what God was looking for for your redemption? So Jesus paid the price for your redemption. That's why when you say, I accept you as my what, sir? Talk to me now. Lord and Savior, because you paid the price. Now, what we know about lords is that those they pay the price for do their bidding. Let me tell you what you are in case you don't like it because of our history. You are a born slave. You are a slave to your Lord. So we are slaves to Jesus. Paul did not shy away from it. Paul said, I 
he was proud to say it he said i a bond slave of the lord jesus christ a bond slave perpetually i am given by choice to the lord jesus christ that is why he said nevertheless not as i will but as he as he wills that's a proof of lordship everybody is moving into that business and everybody told you to school the statistics everything the experts say is good the proof that he's your lord you say master father i'm about to use your money to invest into this thing do you permit me to use your your money do you hear me now do you permit me to put your money there i know it's a strange concept to you now lord the guy looks nice tall dark and handsome six packs and seven packs but lord as good as he is is he the one and you will hear take the oil of your investment away from him the one i'm sending to you is still in the bush lordship that you don't anoint who you want you anoint who he assigns am i helping you this year <laughs> repairing the altar can we join it together this year because sometimes when i see you in church i just laugh at you and i'm like i see some of you think we're all at the same at the same level of <laughs> what we give you is not what we are feeding on so come up a little bit higher repair the altar the altar is a place of sacrifice it's a place of prayer it's a place of prayer with fire that must never go out Join this global community of Transformers today by downloading our latest app right now. We call it the Transformers Hub. It is available on Android and iOS. Be among the first to have it. For more information, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. to connecting with you on the prophetic prayer our altar as God is committed to advancing his wonders through your life we are in the season of wonders without number and the God of wonders will do great wonders in your life until you become a wonder unto many so let it be in Jesus mighty name this is the transforming church international one church making global impact.